Hi, I'm Emil, one of the founders and the CEO of Tomorrow Bio. A while ago, we published an article about the morality and the ethics of cryopreservation. But we thought we'll do a quick video as well. Now, when you talk to people who have not thought about cryopreservation too much, there's always this kind of first gut reaction of, wow, is this ethical, right? Is this morally allowed to do? And then the more and more people think about it, usually they're like, yeah, this seems pretty fine. Why not? Now, let me briefly walk, through, walk you through why we think, yeah, that's actually probably the right way to think about it. Now, it's very important to understand that cryopreservation is only and exclusively done as a last-ditch effort. Basically, when someone gets a terminal condition, terminal disease, let's say cancer or heart disease or end-stage diabetes or whatever it is, then cryopreservation is not done early. In fact, we would be strongly against doing this early. But once medical you know, the, the, the doctors who treat their patients have tried everything, every operation, every, you know, every treatment that you can try. And once the attending physician says, we have tried everything, we unfortunately cannot save that patient, the patient is unfortunately going to die. At that point, the patient can then decide for themselves, and I think this is the very important point, no one else decides for someone to be cryopreserved. It is you making the decision for yourself to, instead of being cremated or buried when they die, instead to be cryopreserved. And I think if someone is dying, then it is very much their right to make that decision for themselves. And it's not like cryopreservation is using money from the statutory healthcare system or anything like that. It is your own money that you use for yourself. And of course, this whole procedure is exclusively done once there's informed consent. That means that it's our obligation as the provider of cryopreservation to make sure that that person understands that cryopreservation is not a guarantee by any means. It is just a chance. And we can't even tell you how high exactly that chance is, but I'm and we are very confident in saying the probability is higher than cremation or burial. And now, knowing that information, if someone says, yes, then I want to do it, then I think it is very much their right. The second point from our obligation, what's in our responsibility, is that I think we are obligated to bring the cost of cryopreservation down, or at least try and do research and try to increase um, our efficiency and scale to bring costs down. The reason for that is that cryopreservation as of today is still relatively expensive, somewhere in the ballpark of 200,000 euros for whole body cryopreservation. Now, 200,000 euros, unfortunately, is an amount of money that just some people don't have, right? So it's, it's impossible for them to um, choose cryopreservation and it, it's very much a pet peeve of mine. In my mind, cryopreservation should purely be a choice and should not depend at all on how wealthy an individual is. So we added brain-only cryopreservation as a first step to be able to at least offer some solution to someone who is not able to pay that money. And don't get me wrong, this money is not going all to us, right? This money is given, or even the largest part of that money is given to a foundation in Switzerland to ensure the long-term stability of keeping someone in cryopreservation. But however you look at it, it is a relatively large amount of money that is needed. So one of the three goals, apart from making cryopreservation better from a quality standpoint and making it more accessible, the third main goal of the company is making cryopreservation more affordable so that everybody can, can afford it. Now, last but not least, when someone thinks about cryopreservation, it's always important to remember that ethical deliberations are usually a weighing of values. You have some type of value, you have other values, and you need to weigh them against each other to decide what in the end should be allowed, what should be permissible, and what we would call, in quotation marks, ethical. In the case of cryopreservation, again, the person makes a choice for themselves. 
it's not using anybody else's money. It's not hurting anybody else. It's not creating downsides or problems for anybody else. So in, again, in that weighing of, of values, I think it is extremely, at least yeah, in my opinion or in the organization's opinion, and I think it, to a degree it makes sense that the personal choice that someone makes for themselves should be have very high value. Now, you might say that there could be, in fact, potential downsides for society, right? So if nothing else, if in the future we might have some type of overpopulation, which again is currently not, it doesn't look like it, right? Every prediction that we currently have is that the population growth worldwide levels out at around um, 13 billion of people. And even if we do our job very, very well, and at some point a million people have signed up for cryopreservation, then one million additional people in the future out of 13 billion, that's less than one in a thousand. So it's a very, very, very small amount of extra people, even um, if we do our job very well. But let's assume it would be more people, or these extra million could potentially have some kind of downside in the future. In that case, I would still argue that in a weighing of values kind of discussion, if someone is dying today, and don't get me wrong, or like it's always important to remember, it's not only 85-year-olds or 95-year-olds who get cryopreserved. In fact, most people who are cryopreserved with us are relatively young, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s. So in my mind, it is unacceptable that we would tell someone who is 50, for example, who is dying of cancer, that they are not allowed to be cryopreserved, or they should not use their own money to be cryopreserved, for the potential risk in the future that there might be an overpopulation problem. And again, overpopulation, as much as it currently looks, will probably not be that much of a problem. It's more a distribution problem than it is an actually population problem, because the amount of additional people, in any case, is very, very small. So long story short, cryopreservation, in our opinion, is clearly a choice that someone makes for themselves, and everybody should have the right to make that choice. If you want to read more, we have linked a more extensive article on the topic of morality and ethics of cryopreservation below. So check it out, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out at any point.